All right, now back to you and me. It's 717 past the hour, and over 7 million people in the U.S. are currently seeking treatment for infertility. It's an issue that affects one out of every seven couples in the U.S. But it all had to begin somewhere, right? In 1981, the first baby in the U.S. was born using IVF treatment. Elizabeth Carr was born December 28th in 1981 and quickly became a media sensation. She's in Chicago for an exciting reason, and she joins us now to chat more. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Such an honor to meet you. Thank Fun you. fact, we actually share a birthday, December 28th. Hi. I'm so sorry. It's the worst time of year to have a birthday. <laughs> it really is. Birth yeah, you got Christmas right there. You ever going to, like, give a present? <laughs> Everyone's out right. of town. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But when you were born, I mean, the media craze surrounding you and being on the cover of Life magazine, what was that like? Do you remember any of it? Uh, my childhood was very interesting. Mm -hmm. I had camera crews follow me around for basically my entire life. And, you know, people wanted to know, are you normal? Um, you know, was I different than any other child? And uh, so, yeah, I was, I was popular when the camera crews were around. You know, I always had... Strange kids wanting to come up and sit next to me and be my best From friend. three days old, right? That's right. My first press jump. conference was at three days old. And there was also negativity. So everyone, you know, labeled you as the test tube baby. But to have everyone then follow you to make sure, hey, I'm living a normal life. I'm doing well. I'm healthy. I mean, you were completely monitored. When did you know this was going to be your story for a very long time? So uh, I think I've always known. But the moment that I truly understood the context of making history, I was about seven years old, and I was sat down between my doctors who explained my birth, which happened to be documented by Nova. So I had one on one side explaining to me all the procedures, and the other one, you know, kind of taught me the elevator speech of IVF is when a sperm and an egg are fertilized in a petri dish, put back in a mother's womb, and nine months later, here I am. <laughs> Now, your parents had trouble conceiving. Can you tell us uh, how they went and why they went with IVF? So my mother um, had scar tissue from a botched appendix surgery, and so her fallopian tubes basically were so badly damaged that she could get pregnant, but not stay pregnant. And so everything else about her was healthy. They were going to go down the adoption route, and her uh, OBGYN threw her this brochure and said, well, this is highly controversial. It hasn't been tried in the U.S. yet, but it worked in the U.K., go check it out. And so she applied to the clinic in Virginia and about a week later, uh, they were down there starting the process. Yeah. yeah. And how has IVF changed since then? IVF is a lot more commonplace. So, you know, now there are more than 5 million babies in the world. Um, and so it's a much more commonly accepted thing. A lot of states are actually covering it with insurance. When I was born, I'm from Massachusetts. It was illegal in Massachusetts at wow. the time, which is why I was born in Virginia. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, that's why we're here. Conferences like MRSI, which is why I'm in town, it really helps educate the public about what their options are and what's out there. Now, what do you want people to know if they're interested in starting this journey? I think the biggest thing is you have to decide what is best for you. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of couples that actually start going down the process and just emotionally or financially you know, can't handle going through IVF. Maybe surrogacy or adoption is a better option for you. You have to really kind of research. There are so many options out there now. You know, when I was born, that was your only option. It was adoption or try this thing that had never been tried. And so now you have such a wide variety. It's, it's much better. And you have a special meet while you're in Chicago, correct? I do. I'm very excited. I feel like I'm going to the nerd prom or something. <laughs> um, the first IVF baby in the world is actually in town for this conference as well. And so I'm meeting her face to face for the first time. You know, she was the first in the world and I've actually never met her it's gonna be so up cool. until this week. So I'm very, very excited. Plus I'm excited to sightsee here in Chicago. So Have you ever been able to connect with her before or connect with anyone you know, in your situation? So uh, Louise and I have FaceTimed before and we had a good chuckle about all the weird questions people right. have asked us. Mm -hmm. um, and then the group of 10 babies that were conceived at the same clinic that I was in, um, we all actually wear these necklaces um, and they all have our, our initials and our number on one side. And so the first 10 and I are very close. 
Um, so it's it's like a little uh, brother and sisterhood yeah, club. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, we hope you enjoy Chicago and do some sightseeing. The architectural tour is a must while you're here, okay? Thank you so much. So thank, nice meeting you. Thank you too. so much for joining us. And you can catch Elizabeth Carr and Louise Brown meeting for the first time. The event is this Saturday starting at 2.30 at the Drake Hotel. The cost is only $15 per person. Log on to cvent.com for ticket information. Your celebrity birthday.